Thanks. I got the honor to introduce Yevgenia Trufanova. She's a data scientist at Delivery Hero, and she's talking about a problem we all face to some degree, at least those of us working with data. It's breaking the ice, solving the item coaster problem in e-commerce search. Stage is yours. Uh, can you hear me well? Oh, okay, cool. So, hi everyone. I'm Yevgenia, and today I would like to talk about cold start problem in e-commerce search. Oops. Yep. So first, a couple of words about me. I'm a data scientist with approximately four years of experience in the industry, and I started my career at a fashion AI startup. Then I shifted to banking industry, where I was mainly focusing in natural language processing and AutoML toolkits development. And now, currently, I'm a delivery hero uh, in search ranking team, and that's why I'm here today to talk about search. So what is delivery hero, by the way? Uh, we are a food ordering and delivery company. Uh, we offer delivery for both restaurants, food, and quick commerce, so groceries, and so on. And currently, we operate in more than 70 countries worldwide. But ironically, we don't operate in Germany, even though our headquarters is in Germany. Uh, there are more than 500,000 restaurants available for delivery from all of our platforms. So, yeah, we don't cook pizza ourselves. Rather, we partner with restaurants. So these restaurants are kind of also our partners and our clients in some sense. And some of our brands that you may have heard of include Food Panda, Globo, Yemexipeti, and others. So I will start with a quick high-level over overview of our current state of search system. Uh, so it is common in general for modern e-commerce search systems to include two steps of ranking, retrieval and re-ranking. And we are not an exception. So the first stage, retrieval. Uh, given the search query, it aims to quickly retrieve a subset of relevant items from the catalog, so from the database of all items. In our case, it is done by Elasticsearch. Um, so this step allows us to significantly narrow down the search space and thus the computational load for the consequent stage, re-ranking. And the second stage, re-ranking, usually uses some uh, more advanced, sophisticated algorithm uh, or a machine learning model to, um, to provide a more fine-grained ranking. So it outputs a reordered set of items retrieved by retrieval, and that is the result that the final user sees. So in our case, that's a ordered list of restaurants. And why have two steps ranking? So the idea is that the first stage is uh, kind of fast, efficient, but sometimes a bit simple, while the second stage is more smart, advanced, but at the same time more resource demanding. So uh, usually it is uh, very expensive or not possible to rank all of the items, all of the catalog with the machine learning model. And uh, in this setup, we can kind of balance between costs and ranking granularity, uh, for example, by adjusting this n number of candidates that we retrieve. And now we're going to zoom in into the second stage, uh, machine learning model, because that's where cold start problem usually originates. So uh, machine learning ranking models can use a variety of different features, but most of them will use some kind of behavioral features. This can be some popularity measures, uh, past, uh, past interactions statistics, like number of past orders or past clicks for this item for, let's say, in the last week or month, uh, click-through rate, conversion rate, and so on. Uh, and often these features are one of the most important ones. So our machine learning models usually heavily rely on past interactions and behavioral features for ranking. And it's okay, and it makes sense to like, prefer uh, to show popular items higher, uh, however, we can think about new items or new restaurants in our case. What happens to them? So we already know that our models are kind of biased towards more popular items. 
but new items cannot be popular by definition because they are new. So the model will probably assign quite a low score to them. And let's see what happens to them using an example. So imagine you are a restaurant manager and you decide to sign up for Delivery Hero platform. Uh, so you've joined, uh, onboarded, and you are pretty excited, looking forward to attracting new customers and receiving more orders. However, uh, you don't have any past orders because you just joined. So from the model perspective, the value of this feature will be zero for you. You don't have any past clicks either. And as a result, you don't have any trackable CVR. So uh, for all of these features, uh, the value for all of these features, the values for your restaurant will be zero or missing. And as a result, the model is going to assign a low score to you and you will end up somewhere like on the second page in the search results. 47 is just an, an example. So it is just to illustrate that it can be really far and really low. And basically you are not discoverable. So users don't see you when, you're, when they're looking for food. And as a result, you don't, have, you don't receive any orders from our platform. You're upset and disappointed. And basically uh, that's in fact an, a vicious circle for new items. So they don't have any uh, past interactions. So they are ranked on lower positions and they don't receive any new orders. And on the next iteration, they don't have any orders, any past orders again. And it can be pretty difficult for a new restaurant or new item to get out of it, of this circle. Um, and you may ask, uh, like, why do we care? Why is it an important problem? Uh, on the one hand, this issue does not affect our users because they simply don't see it. Uh, and new restaurants make up quite a small fraction of all of the restaurants, all of our catalog. However, this is basically how we grow. So we grow uh, by new restaurants joining our platform. And if we don't provide good experience to them, they will either leave or stop joining. So anyway, we won't be able to grow as a platform. Uh, that's why that's an important problem for us in Delivery Hero. And yeah, that's basically what is called cold start problem. Uh, so again, to summarize what, what is called star problem, our machine learning ranking models rely on past interactions. New items have uh, no past interactions. And as a result, they are shown on the lower positions and uh, they receive no or very few clicks and orders. And our goal, what we want to do here is to increase visibility and traffic for new items without significantly harming the old ones, of course, because we care about them as well. So this is how cold start problem looked like a delivery hero before we started working on it. So this plot shows average uh, positions in search results for new restaurants versus old restaurants. So not new ones. And it is something like 40 versus 25, which is quite a big difference. And uh, yeah, the larger this number is, the lower you're actually shown in the, on the search results page. So the larger the number, the worse. Uh, and this animation is just to illustrate how far it actually is, the 40th position. So even in the desktop, you would need to scroll a lot in order to actually reach it, not to mention mobile. So basically, nobody's going to ever scroll that far. Uh, so we realized that we have such an issue and started working on it, trying to mitigate cold start problem for new restaurants. And now I will tell about uh, our journey, uh, about which strategies are there to tackle cold start problem and uh, what worked for us and what didn't. So we decided to start with the most uh, simple and straightforward thing. Uh, we thought, okay, our problem is that uh, new restaurants are shown on the lower positions. Uh, then why don't we try to artificially boost them somehow? So indeed, we can either move them and positions higher, all the new restaurants, or we can apply some boosting factor to their model score so that they are moved higher. And we implemented some solution, tested it, and the result was neutral. So the A-B test was neutral. We didn't see any improvement for 
new restaurants, any significant improvement at least. And um, uh, this was not clear to us, like uh, in this approach, what is the correct way to choose this N? Or how do we decide on the boosting factor? Uh, should we apply the same boosting factor to all of the restaurants or should there be some additional logic or heuristic on top of that, like we only promote good ones? And finally, is this approach just kind of bad and not working or was it us? Did we choose the wrong number? So yeah, basically there were more questions than answers and this approach is not as simple as it seems. So it can work, if it works, it's fine, but sometimes it can be really difficult to tune, to choose the correct hyperparameters for this. So we moved on and decided to try something kind of smarter. The next thing we, we have tried out uh, was adding cold start as a feature. So this approach was described in a paper on YouTube's recommendation algorithm. And this suggests proposed adding a cold start flag or new item flag as a feature to the machine learning ranking model. Or uh, you can also, also add items age or days since upload uh, in YouTube's case. So we tried that as well. We tried both options and uh, the result was neutral. Again, no improvement in offline metrics and our models seem to be completely ignoring these new features. Uh, probably the reason is that uh, in case with content recommendations, um, often users are looking specifically for new and fresh content. Uh, and in YouTube's case, new videos tend to go viral and become popular really quickly. But apparently that's not the case with the restaurant search and we don't get viral restaurants. And this plot is from the original paper. It shows distribution of probability of video being clicked or watched uh, based on days since upload. So uh, we can say big spike immediately after zero days. Uh, and that's like the empirical distribution in YouTube's recommendations. But uh, our empirical, em empirical distribution doesn't look anything similar, so probably that's why this approach was not suitable for us. Um, and also regarding online evaluation for cold start solutions. So uh, it can be pretty difficult and expensive actually to A-B test these solutions. Uh, as I've mentioned, new items uh, make up a small fraction of all of the items usually, so the tra their traffic is low. And you may have to run your A-B test for a really long time in order to see some significant change in the metrics, which is sometimes expensive or even impossible. Uh, yep, so although offline metrics are biased, they still give us some idea on whether we should proceed with this approach or not. And in this case, we decided not to proceed and move on. Uh, the next thing was, uh, is called dropout net. So this approach is inspired by uh, neural networks uh, dropout, so dropout method in neural networks. And in case with cold start problem, we try to apply input dropout during the, the training. So during the training, we would randomly set uh, past interaction features to zero for some random fraction, randomly selected restaurants. Even if in fact they did have these past interactions and they did have values for this feature. So we were kind of hiding these features from the model. And this way the model was supposed in theory to not to rely on past interactions too much and uh, generalize better to cold start restaurants. Uh, so we've tried that and um, guess what? Yeah, no, it didn't work either. No improvement in offline metrics again. In fact, we even see, we, we even saw a drop in offline metrics old restaurants that are not cold start, which is not acceptable. Uh, but we didn't give up. We didn't give up and continued our attempts to tackle cold start problem. The next approach, I call it feeling missing interactions. So uh, basically our root problem is that we don't have past interaction features for new restaurants, but we are data scientists. So what do we do when do we don't have any, when we have missing feature values, we try to fill them. Uh, so uh, yes, indeed, we can try to approximate or uh, 
estimate like how many uh, orders uh, or clicks per week uh, the new item would get if it wasn't new, if it would have been around for a longer period of time. And this can be done uh, in at least two ways that are shown on this slide, uh, representative based and based on prediction priors. So the first uh, option is based on assumption that um, for new restaurants or items, uh, their interaction values will be uh, would be similar to interaction values of old items that are kind of similar to them. And then we can approximate uh, interaction features for new items by averaging those of old items that represent it. So, for example, if there is a new pizza restaurant in the neighborhood, uh, then like it is likely that eventually it will get approximately as many orders per week as other old pizza restaurants in the same area and in the same price category. Yeah, uh, and the second option is creating a separate model to predict this interaction feature values for new items. And this model would be trained on old items for which we already have these numbers, already have these values, statistics. Uh, and this approach was uh, uh, proposed in Amazon's paper on cold start problem, and that is what we've tried. So we create a separate model to predict order and click counts for new items. Uh, this model can use such a model can use uh, use various query features like search query frequency, whether that's a popular query or not, uh, item attributes, or maybe even external data sources. Then we use uh, we can use this model to fill missing interaction features for cold start items, and finally apply our normal machine learning ranking model on these already filled features. So we've done that, and uh, it finally worked for us. So we got some improvement in offline metrics for uh, cold start restaurants, which is good, hooray! Uh, but we still wanted to try something else. Um, approach five hybrid ranking. So actually we can uh, have some, we can combine multiple algorithms or multiple models in our ranking. And then for new items, we can use the one that does not rely on past interactions features, on behavioral features. Uh, and in delivery hero search, we decided not to invent a new algorithm for that, but rather use an existing one. And we used Elasticsearch, our first retrieval stage. So we combined Elasticsearch ranks with machine learning model ranks in the following way. So for example, if we have five restaurants to rank and one of them is new, cold start, that is the blue one. So uh, for example, if Elasticsearch assigns rank two to this new restaurant, we will just put it in the second position. So we will Elasticsearch rank. And the rest of the rest restaurants will be ordered with our normal machine learning model, and they will fill the remaining slots in the corresponding order. So this way, new items are not like discriminated for not having past interactions, and they get a chance to become more visible and get more traffic. Um, and uh, the last thing, uh, multi-arm bandits. So this is the one approach that we didn't try out and explore yet in Delivery Hero, but I'm still mentioning it here to show the full picture. So uh, describing how it works goes beyond the scope of this talk and the timeline of this talk probably. So I'll just give, give a high level concept. Um, a cold start pro problem arises when uh, we have insufficient data about new items. And multi-arm bandits allow us to balance in an adaptive way between exploration and exploitation. And in case with cold start problem, uh, exp exploration is preferring new items uh, for which we don't know their behavior yet. So we don't know how users interact with them, whether they will like them or not, order them or not. So. Uh, we are exploring these probability distributions this way. And exploitation is preferring known items that, has, that have already proved to work well and bring us orders and revenue, basically. Um, yeah, so that was very uh, high level and superficial, but now you know that it can be used for cold start problem as well. And here are our results. 
So we chose hybrid ranking and predicting interaction features as two of the most promising approaches. And for offline evaluation, we are using NDCG as our relevance metric. So for both of them, there was no difference with the baseline in terms of overall NDCG, uh, which is expected and what we actually wanted to achieve. So that's fine. However, for cold start sessions, there was uh, uh, cold start sessions, which are uh, search sessions where users did order from a new restaurant. Uh, both of the approaches had significant uplift. So uh, these numbers are relative, not absolute, but yeah, that's still good. Uh, and finally, since our main goal was to improve visibility and traffic for new vendors, we also analyzed their positions in search results. And it turned out that both of these approaches uh, significantly decreased the average position of new restaurants in the search results from 41 to like 26 and 27, which is a big improvement and new restaurants should be much more visible now. So A-B testing process for these solutions is ongoing, uh, but we expect it to significantly improve experience for new vendor, new restaurants, uh, and make them happier and thriving. So that was our experience. Uh, for your e-commerce search system, your results can be and probably will be different, but still experiment, try out different things and uh, hopefully you'll be able to break the ice of the cold start problem. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, uh, Yevgenia, for sharing your experience and the great work. Um, do we have any questions? Thank you for your talk, it was very interesting. Uh, my question is, how are you making sure that new restaurants are not taking over uh, all the, um, the spaces in the first few spots? Uh, you mean the new restaurants that they're not taking over all the first spots? Uh, at the moment, we are not uh, making sure that doesn't happen. Anyhow, uh, it is unlikely to happen in our case because uh, we have um, quite a small ratio of new restaurants. But in general, yeah, probably you could employ some additional logic, like you don't uh, you promote new restaurants, but you don't put them in the first position or something like that. Um, thank you for the presentation. I'm wondering, um, so you definitely have invested quite a lot into solving this issue. Um, and I'm wondering what would be then your definitions of done, like when you think like, okay, we have maybe not solved it completely, but we've done enough. Uh, that's a good question, but I think like at which point you should start, you should stop, uh, improving your search in general. <laughs> Is there any criteria where you can stop working on that and say that it's good enough? So yeah, right now we don't have any, uh, criteria probably except that, uh, receiving less complaints from clients. Thank you. Thank you for your talk. Uh, so I was wondering, what kind of metric are you trying to optimize? Because I've seen like clicks and popularity and other features use as features, while normally I tend to use as as optimization metrics. Mm -hmm. uh, you mean for cold start for the second stage re-ranker? Uh, for the second stage re-ranker, you you were training. Oh, for ABTS, we are trying uh, to for training for training average. actually. Uh, for training, we are optimizing NDCD. Yeah, but the you are estimating relevance of query document pairs, right? Yes. And based on what? Uh, so how do you decide that a, a restaurant is good for a query? Oh, you mean the features? Uh, oh, you mean the targets? The, yeah, the target conversions, orders, orders. We are using. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so I have a think. question along the same lines. Uh, so for A-B testing, what would be a um, target? Because it sounds a bit like a multi-objective optimization. So you said that for you as a company, one thing is important, mm -hmm. but for the users, a different thing, thing might be important. So what would be the metric then? 
Yeah, yeah. So for um, in this particular, usually we are optimizing conversions in the A-B test, uh, but in this particular case, um, like overall conversion will be the guardian metric. So we want don't want it to drop, uh, but we will be monitoring new restaurants conversions separately. There is. Oh. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, have you thought about other ways to increase visibility or exposure of new restaurants? Maybe if you have ads for new restaurants or maybe a slider. These are the new restaurants um, of uh, the Italian category or stuff like that. Maybe that would uh, try to uh, help uh, solve the problem too. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have ads and I believe we do have some labels like new new restaurant i'm not sure about that because i'm not in the front end team uh but uh, yeah this is uh, kind of solving this problem from the other end so i was uh stunned by the improvement in ndcg that that seems incredible um but a uh, different question here um uh, how long do you run these i mean a b is a very funny thing because one hypothesis is that familiarity is something that's important to users and they have to see a restaurant multiple times before they click on it. I mean, this is certainly a phenomenon that we see in other areas that if they're not familiar with it, they won't click on it. So if you're running an AB test, uh, first of all, I assume it's a, a stable population, but how do you, how long do you run it before you start uh, calculating results? Uh, I think usually we run it for like one week or a couple of weeks, but in uh, this case, in this particular case, we may need to run it for a longer time because uh, the, hmm, how to say, the groups are smaller, the traffic is smaller. So I I'm not sure how exactly, uh, because uh, we have an analytics team who, who is managing this, so I'm not going to lie. Let's make sure when you say a b test uh, are is that uh by individuals or is that random uh, like ip is it by ip address or something stable so that the same people are seeing the b test or are they sometimes seeing b and sometimes seeing a mm -hmm. yeah I, I get your questions <laughs> wait a second i got your, mic well, your microphone so that the our kids will uh, so yeah, I'll take the question because I'm the PM for her. Um, the division for the AP test is based on users. Uh, so every user who has seen or been in the variation bucket will always see the variation. Uh, we are running the test for a period of seven to 14 days. Why? Uh, the period seems to be a bit smaller because we are an app wherein the user visits are very often because of food delivery app. So roughly in a week, we get around two to three visits from every user on an average. So that's why it's easier to expose the users a uh, significant number of times to any cold start window. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it's very nice talk. Thank you so much. I was just wondering to uh, connect what you started from, like you just uplifted some new doc, new um, restaurants by positions too. Mm -hmm. Now in the last step, you have a machine learned model and you just say like, if it's ranked two, you put it there. I'm wondering, Instead of two positions, let's boost it up into let's in the top five. Have you compared that? Let's say you randomly take a new um, restaurant, put it in the top five and randomize there. And you compare this versus the machine learned model. What I'm trying to get at is, does the machine learned model really bring in some quantitative value out? Or is it really just as good as the random boost? Uh, we didn't try uh, this option in per exactly. Uh, but uh, I think in general, yes. Like. Uh, um, not a machine learning model, but some uh, another algorithm, ranking algorithm, does bring an additional value because, uh, so like in this example, this uh, restaurant was ranked by Elasticsearch in the, in the second position among these five, so it is somehow relevant to the to the query, and this is already better than just blindly boosting, promoting all of the new restaurants because some of them may not be good or relevant at all. Do you have any other question? If not, then thank you for the talk and have a good day.